All right, let's get through a, a review of sequences and series. First up, we're going to just use nth term equations to, to write the first few terms of a sequence. Nth term equations allow you to, for the first term, just plug in 1 for n. So the first term is 3 times 1 instead of 3n minus 5. So 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Second term, plug in 2 for n. 6 minus 5 is 1, and a sub 3, plug in 3 for n. 9 minus 5 is 4. So the first three terms are negative 2, 1, and 4. And we can keep going. Same thing for this. This is 3 to the nth power divided by n. So our first term is 3 to the first divided by 1, which is 3. Second term, 3 to the second divided by 2, so that is 9 over 2. And our third term, 3 to the third over 3. So 3 times 3 times 3, that's 27 over 3, which is 9. Um, so our first three terms, 3, 9 halves, and 9. And we can keep plugging in. So on and so forth. The next one, we're going to find the first few terms of the sequence, but these are defined recursively. And this is all about notation. So first they give us where to start. a sub 1, our first term is negative 3. And a sub n is defined as 4 times a sub n minus 1. So for example, this is really just the previous term. So this is a sub 2, just going to be 4 times negative 3 plus 5. Because if we want to find a sub 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, so we're going to use a sub 1 to get there. So negative 12 plus 5 um, is negative 7. 4 times negative 3, negative 12, a sub 3. 4 times negative 7 plus 5. Um, so that's negative 28, plus 5 is negative 23. Um, just checking my work, I don't want to mess up. 4 times negative 23, the previous term, plus 5. So 4 times negative 23 is 92, plus 5, get negative 87, and then... Our fifth term is 4 times negative 87 plus 5, negative 343. So our first five terms, negative 3, negative 7, negative 23, negative 87, negative 343. Big key is recognizing that as the previous term. This one's very similar, except they define it as to find a sub n plus 1, which is kind of like the next term, you need the current term. To find a sub 2, we need 4 minus 6, negative 2. a sub 3, we're going to use negative 2 minus 6 negative 8. a sub 4, we're going to use negative 8 minus 6, negative 14. a sub 5, we're going to use negative 14 minus 6, negative 20. All of these use the prior term and then subtract 6. So our sequence 4, negative 2, negative 8, negative 14, and negative 20. That is what we call an arithmetic sequence because they're subtracting 6 every single time. All right, so now on to sigma notation. When we have a sigma, we start at this. Uh, we start with k equals 1 and go up to 5, and the sigma is telling us to find the sum. We're going to add all these up. So 1 squared plus 1. 2 squared plus 1, 3 squared plus 1, 4 squared plus 1, and 5 squared plus 1. All of these are the five terms, and we're going to add them together. 
So 2, 4 plus 1 is 5, 9 plus 1 is 10, 16 plus 1 is 17, 5 squared, 25, 26. So 2, 5, 10, 17, 26 make a total of 60. Um, next one, from 0 to 6. So we're going to plug in 0 first. 3 times 0 minus 10 plus 3 times 1 minus 10. And I'm going to do this one all the way out. Technically, this is an arithmetic series. We'll come to the shortcut later on. 3 times 2 minus 10, um, 3 times 3 minus 10, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, And so what you'll notice is that this is um, negative 10, negative 7, negative 4, negative 1, um, 2. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So I knew that we were adding three every single time because our common difference was three. Starting at negative ten because of the zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And when we add those up, we get negative seven. Or in other words, if you find your first and your last term, negative ten plus eight is two times three and a half terms. Two times three and a half, sure enough, is seven. Except it negative two times three and a half. We'll come back to how I did that. Um, using summation notation. So what we notice about all of these is that they aren't adding the same amount each time because we become decimals. And so what I start looking at is, is the term divided by the term in front of it the same thing every single time. 12 over 16 is 3 fourths and 9 twelfths is also 3 fourths and so that must be R. And so our common ratio and so I'm going to say well it's starting at 16 it multiplies by 3 fourths every time and I'm going to use I because start with I. We're going to use sigma notation starting with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So i equals 1 through 5. And if I plug in 1 here, I'm going to multiply by 3 fourths already. So I want to subtract 1 so I don't actually raise 3 fourths to the first power. And that way, 3 fourths is raised to the 0 power the first time. So you end up with 16 when you plug in 1. End up with 12 when you plug in 2. And you can try that out. The next one. 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, you notice that we're adding 2 every single time. So we're going to have a 2 times i in there because we're repeatedly adding 2, so that's like multiplication. Here we're repeatedly multiplying by 3 fourths. Repeatedly multiplying by 3 fourths turns into uh, exponents. Um, we're going to have sigma. We're going to start at i equals 1 and go through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We've got seven terms. Um, and we've got to add 2 to this. Because when you plug in 1, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 2 is 4. Plug in 2, you get 4 plus 2 is 6. And so that is our sigma notation.